Hi, my name is Casey, and I'm working with the Homer Soil and Water Conservation District to bring you the 2021 annual workshop for the Kenai Peninsula Cooperative Invasive Species Management Area, otherwise known as the KP Sisma. There are a bunch of good videos on YouTube that explain how to use a spill kit. For example, this one from High Speed Training that we link to on our YouTube channel. But in addition to the basic components and use outlined in these videos, the Pesticide Applicator Certification Core Manual also has some valuable tips. This video will summarize spill kit use specific to small-scale pesticide applicators, as well as some general useful tips. We'll cover the three C's, where to keep a spill kit, what's in your kit, cleanup for outdoor areas, emergency contacts, personal protective equipment, labeling, and record keeping. The three C's are simple. Control, contain, clean up. In other words, don't try to clean up a mess until you first contained its edges, and don't try to contain it until you first stop the spillage. Remember, you're required to keep a spill kit in every vehicle used to transport pesticides and at the site where they're mixed, loaded, and stored. It's also worth noting that you'll probably be working with a few ounces of concentrated herbicide or a few gallons of mix, so a five gallon bucket type of spill kit should be adequate. The components of the kit will be similar. If you have a leak, it will probably be in a relatively small vessel. It's a good idea to keep a larger container nearby so you can place the smaller leaking container into the bigger one. In addition to the basic spill kit, the Pesticide Applicator Core Manual also suggests keeping a fire extinguisher rated for chemical fires. This can be your common and locally available Class ABC chemical extinguisher. You should also always keep a first aid kit on hand. I like to keep extra eye wash with my gear, which isn't strictly required, but I get a little paranoid about the health of my eyeballs. Since you'll be working outside in a vegetated area, if you don't have an absorbent boom in your kit, you can shovel up soil into a berm to contain a spill. Of course, this won't keep the herbicide from infiltrating soil, but it will contain surface spread. If a spill contacts a water body, contact the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation. You may need to contact other agencies as well, depending on where the spill takes place. Unfortunately, or unfortunately, this photo is actually from someone putting blue dye in their pond intentionally. To make it pretty, I guess, but at least it's not herbicide. You may need to call the pesticide manufacturer's emergency number located on the safety data sheet to find out what steps need to be taken to reduce the risk of water contamination. In extreme cases, say where you spill a large quantity of pesticide in a populated area, you may also need to call 911. Your organization should have an emergency plan in place, which will outline steps for you to follow if a spill occurs. In some cases, the applicator will call their supervisor, who will, in turn, report the spill to authorities. Here in Alaska, we make every effort to use the least toxic product to get the job done. That's why most of the herbicides you'll use have the signal word caution, also known as the lowest toxicity category. The personal protective equipment used for these chemicals is the basics, long sleeve shirt, pants, closed toed shoes, and socks. However, always read your product label as PPE legal requirements will vary between products. In addition to the basics, I personally choose to use safety glasses or goggles for every job. I keep my hair pulled back and out of my face, and don't forget that coveralls can be both practical and fashionable. Every pesticide storage area needs proper labeling, which is available on the Alaska Department of Environmental Conservation website. These signs will read warning or danger, pesticide storage area, depending on the most toxic chemical on site. While you're on this webpage, grab the signage for public places treated area keep out. Storage areas also need to be kept locked. Being a pesticide applicator requires keeping detailed records and being prepared for an emergency. I recommend keeping a binder with your spill kit and work materials, which should include the following information and data sheets. And remember, pesticide use records must be retained for at least two years following treatment and provided to the Department of Environmental Conservation at their request. In the case of an emergency, you don't want to go scrambling for phone numbers. Have them written out or saved in your phone in advance. Examples of numbers you may need are provided here and in the YouTube video notes, but they will vary by location and product. If there's a mishap on the job, you'll need to fill out an incident summary form, which captures pertinent details of the event. These items are also listed in the YouTube video notes. Also include in your binder product labels and safety data sheets for pesticides you use. The Department of Environmental Conservation requires 13 bits of information to be recorded for every application job. You can find their pesticide use records data sheet on their website. Also, always keep on you or in your binder a copy of your pesticide applicator certification. I choose to keep a checklist for packing and field prep in my binder as well. 
Lastly, I keep several copies of the Attention Keep Out sign, along with plastic sleeves, wood stakes, and a staple gun. These signs are also on the Department of Environmental Conservation website. Thanks for watching. Let's keep Alaska wild and free of invasive species. Visit KeniInvasives.org to learn more. Thank you.